As we have seen, the eddy current technique depends on the generation of induced currents within the test object. Perturbations or disturbances in these small induced currents affect the test coil. The result is variance of test coil impedance due to test object variables. These are called operating variables. Some of the operating variables are coil impedance, electrical conductivity, magnetic permeability, skin effect, liftoff, fill factor, end effect, edge effect, and signal to noise ratio. In electron theory, the atom consists of a positive nucleus surrounded by orbiting negative electrons. Materials that allow these electrons to be easily moved out of orbit around the nucleus are classified as conductors. In conductors, electrons are moved by applying an outside electrical force. The ease with which the electrons move through the conductor is called its conductance. A unit of conductance is the mo. The mo is the reciprocal of the ohm, represented by the equation G equals 1 over R, where G is the conductance in mo's and R is the resistance in ohms. In eddy current testing, instead of describing conductance in absolute terms, an arbitrary unit has been assigned. Since the relative conductivity of metals and alloys varies over a wide range, the need for a conductivity benchmark is of prime importance. In 1913, the International Electrochemical Commission established a convenient method of comparing one material to another. The commission established that a specified grade of high purity copper, one meter in length and having a uniform section of one millimeter squared, measuring 0 0.017 241 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius would be arbitrarily considered 100% conductive. The symbol for conductivity is sigma, and the unit is percent IACS, or percent of the international annealed copper standard. Conductance and resistance are direct reciprocals as stated earlier. This means that a good conductor is a poor resistor. But conductivity and resistivity have different origins and units, so the conversion is not so direct. The arbitrary scale for conductivity, expressed in percent IACS, can be converted to resistivity, which is expressed in absolute terms of micro-ohm centimeters. To convert to either unit, we follow the equation percent IACS equals 172.41 over the resistivity in micro-ohm centimeters. As the test coil is influenced by different conductivities, its impedance varies inversely to conductivity. A higher conductivity causes the test coil to have a lower impedance value. Graphically, the coil's imaginary component is represented by the y-axis, and the coil's real component appears on the x-axis. The 0% conductivity point, or air point, occurs when the empty coil's reactance is maximum. The figure represents a measured conductivity locus. Materials with different chemical compositions have varying conductivity ratings, but conductivity is influenced by many other factors. Some of the factors which affect conductivity are temperature, heat treatment, grain size, hardness, and residual stresses. In metals, as the temperature is increased, the conductivity is decreased. Carbons and carbon compounds have negative temperature coefficients. Therefore, their conductivity increases as temperature is increased. Heat treatment also affects electrical conductivity by redistributing elements in the material. Dependent upon materials and degree of heat treatment, conductivity can either increase or decrease as a result of heat treatment. Stresses in a material due to cold working produce a lattice distortion or dislocation. This mechanical process changes the grain structure and hardness of the material, which changes its electrical conductivity. Hardness in age-hardenable aluminum alloys changes the electrical conductivity of the alloy. The electrical conductivity decreases as hardness increases. As an example, a Brunel hardness of 60 is represented by a conductivity of 23 and a Brunel hardness of 100 of the same alloy would have a conductivity of 19. Permeability of any material is a measure of the ease with which its atoms can be aligned, or the ease with which it can establish lines of force. Materials are rated on a comparative basis. Air is assigned a permeability of 1, 
A basic determination of permeability, mu, is mu equals the number of lines produced with a material as a core, divided by the number of lines produced with air as a core. Ferromagnetic metals and alloys, including nickel, iron, and cobalt, tend to concentrate magnetic flux lines. Ferromagnetic material, or centered ionic compounds, are also useful in concentrating magnetic flux. Magnetic permeability is not constant for a given material. The permeability depends more upon the magnetic field acting upon it. As an example, consider a magnetic steel bar placed in an encircling coil. As the coil current is increased, the magnetic field of the coil will also increase. The magnetic flux within the steel will increase rapidly at first and then will tend to level off as the steel approaches magnetic saturation. The phenomenon is called the Barkhausen effect. When increases in the magnetizing force produce little or no change in the flux within the steel bar, the bar is magnetically saturated. When ferromagnetic materials are saturated, permeability becomes constant and ferromagnetic materials may be inspected like other metals. Without magnetic saturation, ferromagnetic materials exhibit such a wide range of signals caused by permeability variation that signals produced by discontinuities or conductivity variations are masked. Permeability effects are most predominant at lower frequencies. In many applications, electromagnetic tests are most sensitive to test object variables nearest the test coil. This is due to skin effect. Skin effect is a result of interaction between eddy currents, operating frequency, test object conductivity, and permeability. The skin effect is the concentration of eddy currents nearest the test coil and becomes more evident as test frequency, test object conductivity, and permeability are increased. The electromagnetic field produced by an excited test coil extends in all directions around the coil. As test objects' geometrical boundaries are approached by the test coil, they are sensed by the coil prior to the coil's arrival at the boundary. The coil's field precedes the coil by some distance, which is determined by coil parameters, operating frequency, and test object characteristics. As the coil approaches the edge of a test object, eddy currents become distorted by the edge signal. This is known as edge effect. Response to the edges of test objects can be reduced by the incorporation of magnetic shields around the test coil or by reducing the test coil diameter. Edge effect is a term most applicable to the inspection of sheets or plates with a probe coil. End effect follows the same logic as edge effect. End effect is the signal observed when the end of a product approaches the test coil. Response to end effect can be reduced by coil shielding or reducing coil length in outside diameter encircling or inside diameter bobbin coils. End effect is a term most applicable to the inspection of bar or tubular products.